Unite, good morning. Unity Unite 2024 is well underway, and I wanted to talk about some of the interesting things that stuck out during the keynote, but more interestingly is all the things mentioned throughout the roadmap talk. First and foremost, I have to mention it, everyone has to mention the runtime fee is officially gone. Now, this wasn't announced at Unity, it was actually announced roughly a week ago, and the entire rollout for the runtime fee was, well, a major disaster, and it has now been officially removed. It is gone. So, this does include the soon-to-be-released Unity 6 engine. Speaking of Unity 6, it looks like we have a official release date finally. It is coming out October 17th. The long wait is finally over and they are calling this their most stable version of the engine. They also announced that Unity 6 will be the engine of choice for some time. Instead of doing yearly releases like they've been doing in the past, they are going to be doing these improved incremental changes. So we'll get Unity 6, Unity 6.1, 6.2, you get the picture. Other features that we get to look forward to with this official release is the new light baking architecture, which promises a more simplified workflow and a more robust code base for light baking, and it should result in hopefully more stable and reliable lighting. We also get the adaptive probe volumes. You know I am a big fan of this. We get a GPU resident drawer, and they mentioned that this is a tool that will reduce draw calls and improves rendering performance by handling batching right out of the box. So a nice little little performance boost for us. We get GPU occlusion culling. This was discussed as a feature that moves occlusion calculations from the CPU over to the GPU, leveraging the GPU's ability to handle large amounts of data simultaneously. There's also something called spatial temporal post-processing, which is referred to as STP. It's going to be a new upscaling feature that boosts GPU performance while also maintaining visual fidelity. And there is a point in the keynote where they keep talking about speed tree for a bit and show you all this cool vegetation that's going on with some wind and that is the power of speed tree we're going to be able to generate a bunch of vegetation plants trees and then also have some cool wind effects without destroying our frame rates so if you're into foliage cool. We're also getting a multiplayer center, which is going to introduce tools and guides for developers to help you figure out multiplayer solutions, and it will re recommend the best services and or plugins for you for whatever your multiplayer goals are. And then we have multiplayer play mode, which I am a big fan of. I think it's very cool. You'll be able to simulate multiple different scenarios with multiplayer and all from your editor. So you can simulate having four players playing, but you are the only one there. This is great because normally I have to send it to my friend they connect to my server and then they say it's not working on their side and that makes no sense to me because it works fine on my machine. The keynote also showcased a very very cool tech demo called Time Ghost which shows the power of Unity, the adaptive probe volumes, HDRP. I mean the whole thing was incredibly impressive. I do appreciate how much it shows you can get out of the engine but for practical uses, it always confuses me. It's like a game trailer that always shows the cinematics, but never the gameplay. Like, show me what this is looking like with actual gameplay. But that's just me. I'm sure other people have different opinions, and that's fine. After that, a Google Cloud collaboration, something called Living Games, powered by AI, so they got that buzzword out of the way. And then we have some monetization and growth tools that they're going to introduce, and a few other goodies. But after the keynote was done, I felt a little little optimistic. It sounds like Unity's heading in a healthy direction. But what really sold me on it is looking at their roadmap for Unity 6 and its future. Part of the roadmap, one of the first things they mentioned is the new generational release model. And they really dove into what it's going to look like and how it should impact us as developers. They are going to be launching major versions or generations like Unity 6, and they're going to have longer cycles. So then they will be doing patches. But along with that is they're doing incremental updated releases. So these are going to be stabilized patches that will introduce new features. So this way we get more features quicker, but we're also not messing up your entire workflow. The talk then moved on to the big key features of Unity 6 and really spelled out all the cool features that are coming with it. We get MeshLod, which is going to be this lightweight level of detail system that will automatically determine the level of detail generation and selection. So the idea being it will, you'll take a bunch of meshes, you will click this button, it will generate a bunch of different levels of detail for it and based on the distance the camera is away from the object it will reduce the quality of it but you know since it's far away it still looks great and so they 
give a demonstration of a scene that has 81 million triangles and putting on mesh lot reduces it down to 4.5 million triangles, which is fantastic, especially if you're a VR developer. We need every little bit of performance. We also get a deferred rendering path, which is going to improve GPU performance with clustered based light culling. But if you're a VR developer, that's not going to help too much because we have to do forward rendering. Typically, maybe that changes in the future. Oh, look at that. It is the future. So it looks like the friend rendering is also going to be optimized for mobile devices. So does this include the VR headsets like the Quest 2? I don't know. I'm going to have to experiment and see if this will work for that. But if it does, hooray. If not, well, congratulations, mobile developers. We're also getting build profiles. So we'll be able to streamline developing and publishing to a bunch of different platforms, which is incredibly useful because as you know, especially for VR developers, there is a wide array of things that you have to consider and switch and change. So that's going to be great. More or on the VR side, XR side, we're going to have an improved scene setup. So we'll be able to just hop in and start developing with everything in place. We're also getting another template that's going to be a mixed reality multiplayer template. So it's going to be a tabletop game that you can play with multiple players in mixed reality. So that's going to be very cool to see how that is set up and how we can develop that ourselves. And anyone who has ever developed or tried to publish to the MetaQuest, we are actually getting a dedicated XR MetaQuest build profile. It's a whole profile dedicated just to the MetaQuest. So it's going to be optimized for the MetaQuest. It's going to have all the settings and configurations that you'll need. So huzzah, we don't have to suffer through that anymore. The section on multiplayer was very cool. We're getting enhanced developed workflows for that. So it's going to have integrated matchmaking. Then we have this really cool one, resilient client hosted game. So if the host disconnects, it will move on to another client who is in the same game instead of shutting it all down and kicking everyone off. Very, very cool feature. And that kind of wrapped up the section for Unity 6. Obviously, that wasn't everything. That's just a few of the things that I really enjoyed and stuck out to me. And then after that, they dove into what's coming next. And the future is looking bright for Unity. So their core design philosophy behind this next generation or the future of Unity is three components. They're looking for simplicity, iteration, and then finally... <laughs> So now that you're awake, let's talk about simplicity. What they want to do there is have a single solution for things. That way you don't have to have a bunch of little plugins and different other components. So we don't need multiple UI systems. We are just going to have one UI toolkit that will kind of mesh this all together. Another example of simplicity is the URP and HDRP are gonna be meshed into one. It's gonna be the unified renderer now. We no longer have to keep these separate. It's gonna be the same thing. And then we can pick and choose what components we want out of it, but you don't don't have to pick entirely a whole different render pipeline. So the built-in is going to be there, URP and HDRP. In the future, the built-in is going to fall off and we will just have the unified renderer, which is going to be a mixture of the URP and HDRP. Here, you'll be able to pick between URP lit, complex lit, simple lit, HDRP lit, and this is all going to be in the unified renderer. You can see here they are switching between the different render loops. And so this is the unified renderer. You can have the high definition pass. You can have the basic renderer and scale it up from there and you can see the different things that are associated with it. We're also getting Shader Graph 2 and it's just an overall update to Shader Graph. It's going to look fancier, a little snappier and have a few more nodes attached to it and have some more functionality. Very cool. And then we got examples of what the iteration idea behind this new Unity is. .NET Core CLR is what we're getting, and then we get a content pipeline. Core CLR is going to replace the mono runtime, and it's going to provide improved editor and runtime performance, and it should also enable the use of the latest C Sharp features. So, woohoo! We're also getting rid of domain reload so we don't have to reload every single assembly. And now we get assembly load context. So only the code that has changed gets reloaded. So that means we get faster iteration times, which is very, very much so needed. More on the iteration side, the content pipeline changes. So there's a new schema based data model that they're using. So when you import things, it's going to be more performant and faster and not slow down the editor. So what used to happen is you would import something and then it would have to reload everything Thing. Very, very annoying, super, super slow. The way this is doing it is it's going to allow us to import things and it's only going to import or have to change the things that are related to what you're importing. We also get background importing. So this is going to prioritize content that you're actively working on and then it's going to import all the assets in the background that you're not really working on. So it's not going to interrupt your workflow. And then finally, they talked about power. 
So what does power mean to them? So for power, ECS is going to be for everyone. We get a new animation system and we get a new world building system. For those of you who don't know what ECS is, it's a programming pattern that is used or will be used in Unity to improve performance and scalability. And this is also a component of DOTS, which if you haven't heard of, is the data-oriented technology stack. It's how you can put a thousand things on the screen and still have high performance. So what this means is you in the future might have a game object facing you, but in the background, it's really going to be an entity and it's going to allow you to have these highly scalable scenes. The animation system also is going to be falling in love with ECS and this is going to allow for scalable animations as well. We'll be able to preview animations without loading a scene. There is going to be a new skeleton workflow and socket objects for easier character setup and finally an advanced state machine and graph based workflows. So the animation is going to now get some love and I am a big fan of that because well I suck at animation and then finally we have world building and so for the world building this is going to be mostly for your technical artists anyone developing their worlds and uh, like everything else it is powered by the entity system so it is going to support procedural world sets it should integrate shader graph for seamless material blending there's going to be optimizations for virtual texturing and the nicest thing about everything is all of this should be flexible across all the platforms so mobile, PC, console, VR, whatever you are aiming for, you should be able to use these tool sets and get some decent results through them. And so there you have it. That is the future roadmap for Unity and what they want to do into the future. Personally, myself, I think this is all very optimistic. You know, there were some dark times roughly a year ago, but it looks like Unity has found themselves again. They're back on track, and I am looking forward to seeing what they produce for us in the future and what we can then produce for everyone else. Let me know in the comments if you are excited for this. If you want to dabble in VR development, I'm hosting a Halloween VR game jam that you should check out. Give this video a like if you found it interesting or helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.